I V M. There are very few people who can actually claim responsibility for influencing history. Colonel Bull Kumar is one of them. He is solely responsible for shaping India's policy towards China, India's policy towards Pakistan, and India's policy towards itself by claiming for India what was rightfully its own, the Siachen Glacier. He is an award-winning mountaineer, a brave soldier, a loving father. but more importantly a man filled with stories in my conversation with him he could talk about every stone every mountain every ridge every line by name and could remember incidences in such detail as if he was reading it from a wikipedia page all i can say is it's exciting to be talking to such a learned man such a humble person he has gone to such heights but at the same time he's right on the ground deep rooted welcome to the vishal gondal show in today's episode i'm having conversation with somebody whose official title is the bull not just given to him because of his strength but given to him because of his achievements and what he has done uh, which is completely mind blowing he loves challenges sniffs it and even before others can see it and goes after it with a single minded pursuit not worried about the consequences if it was not for him siachen glacier would not be ours i am talking of somebody none other than padma shri retired colonel narinder bull kumar Welcome to the show, Kal Kumar. Thank you very much. So uh, it's been really exciting. I've been trying to connect with you for some time, uh, and I'm finally lucky that we met here. So uh, I really want to start with, and I'm sure everybody is curious about the title Bull, because officially having this name given to you must be really, really different. So let's let's lo- let tell me the story behind this name. How did you get this? Well. <coughs> uh... when i was in kelmi i had to fight with uh, a person who was 6 inches tall 6 inches tall who had been coming from rmc with boxing start and i am from transundar high school where gulli danda is taught you know <laughs> so gulli danda you you only learned gulli danda and other local things okay and uh, i had never seen gloves before so when the fight started uh, first two rounds he gave me hell and the referee asked me should i stop i said no get i was bleeding from here bleeding from there but kept it he won first two rounds but in the third i knocked him out oh and he was nobody else then roderick so became chief of the army staff <laughs> <laughs> oh god so that's so why you actually I, knocked out the chief of chief army, army staff okay in academy <laughs> okay so the commandant that he fought like a bull and when the commandant says so then the deputy commandant and the lower officer so when he came back to railway station back to home after term my father went there and He kept on asking, "You have seen Narendra? You have seen Narendra? You have seen Narendra?" Nobody. Knew. Then everybody had left. I was the only chap left. So I saw my parents. I went there. He said, "You are not known." I said, "I am known by bull." <laughs> <laughs> so your parents could not find you in the academy yeah. because nobody knew you no, by your no, name. Yeah. You were called the bull, and so that's then. Yeah. Wow, that's quite a story. But the title of bull, I think you literally took it. to your your heart and your mind because just after the academy and this is what 1960 something which year was this oh academy was 
okay 1950 sorry i was i was born way way later than that and most people here so you finished the academy in 1950 54 54 50 50 and you finished four it in 54 years, it was four years course and within the academy itself you got the title of the bull and after that you you know you, your life has taken you to so many heights as we literally say it uh, what took you to siachen and tell me the story on how did we get siachen glacier because i know everybody has heard about siachen it's making headlines we say it's the highest place where you know armies are fighting indians are spending and everybody is spending millions of dollars there so what is siachen and what is the story behind that glacier actually i was principal of hmi darjeeling so hmi is the uh, it's called the himalayan mountaineering institute Okay, Himalayan Mountaineering Institute in Darjeeling. Darjeeling. This is where all the major it, mountaineers are trained. It's trained. It's the first institute in India, Mecca of mountaineers. So it's the, it's where mountaineers go, all kinds, or only from the military, or no, all know? kinds. But now there are three, four institutes copied so, it from here. Okay, there is Nehru Mountaineering Institute. There is also Bihari Bajpayee Mountaineering Institute. So there are many more have come up. So uh, so Darjeeling has is it the biggest school in, of its kind in the yes, world, or is it no? no. in india in india okay india. because darjeeling is only teaching uh, mountaineering where most of the schools after that what i thought is a mountaineering scheme because mountaineering only in summer yeah and skiing skiing is in winter so if you have a mountain guide he has to look for a job in winter so It's good that he's a ski teacher as well as a mountain guide. Okay, so that's how you combine. So that summer you go for mountaineering, and in winter you do skiing. Yeah. That's that's so interesting. I, I didn't know that. From there, I had a demonstration for Mrs. Gandhi. Oh, and that was the time when she studied Congress side. Oh, and she got out of syndicate, Kamaraj syndicate. Wow, she so feel. She spends about four nights with us in Darjeeling. In Darjeeling, because that institute was started by Pandey Ji mm-hmm. and Dr. B. C. Roy after Tanjung Nagi climbed Everest in '53. Mm-hmm. This was started in '55, and I had a huge demonstration. Actually, Dharmvira was a uh, sorry, no, Pandey Ji Nadu was the governor, and she kept bringing me up. She is coming. What are you going to do, Mr. Madam? Leave it to me. So she kept ringing you that in that Indira Gandhi is coming. She is com- coming, coming, and are you doing something big? And she is coming to her home. Yes, she loves mountains. Her father started in the mountain suit. She is the founder member of the executive committee in Madam. So, and was she the prime minister at that time, or no? She was just. Uh... Or she was in the politics. She was getting into politics. She was politics. in that. She started Congress side. Okay, yeah. At that time, started Congress. Yeah. Side. When she broke the com, you know, comrade thing, okay. comrade thing. Okay. And uh, she seemed very worried at that time. And uh, uh, that is the time when she was going through hoga ni hoga, and I'm glad she pulled through. Mm-hmm. So I had this demonstration uh, where I had called the commander of Ohio Chief of Air School, General Hoon, who started as an army commander. He gave so high altitude warfare school is, is in Gurmat. That's different than the mountaineering. Yes. Okay, so we'll we'll ask you what the difference is between yes, both okay. a little later. So he was commanding that, and uh, uh, General Thayer started that, and. He was a very good speaker. We had done both skiing together. I know this guy. He came, and what a perfect commentary he gave. In fact, Mrs. Gandhi said, "As good as the Mallow." Mm-hmm. At that time, he was a hero, as a commentator, and uh, it went off very well. Tanjung Nagi gave demonstration. Tanjung Sun gave 
demonstration. Yeah. So we met Jamling Norge last Jamling year. Norge. So when I went, he was five years old then. Yeah. So last year when we went to Everest Base Camp, uh, we were lucky. Uh, you yes. know, Pawan actually uh, and uh, Dilshad organized a yeah. meeting with uh, Jamling sir, and we met him. It was a absolute pleasure. But I'll go back hmm. when we were doing any course. Yes, my darling, Tanjing Norge was my director of field training. Director of field training. Training. I was the principal. Okay, so Tenzing Norge used to work under you technically. <laughs> well, not under me, okay. you, but you actually the, the whole institute was created by him. Okay, so, so he was the architect of that institute. Literally. He was that. because of him, because he climbed Everest. It's a thing. So whenever anybody came, I introduced him. I said, "He's the man who started the institute." I'm just, by the way, one of the staff officers. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very humble of you. No, I must no, say. no, no. That's, that's truth. That's truth. So we are going on a place. There is a place called Zamling. We are there when a runner came. At that time, we used to have cell phones. There was no there. mobile, nothing. So we had to have runner going up and over. So runners are people who are actually running from one place to other to carry, carry messages. Carry the mail. And carry mail. the mail. Mail, okay. And because they don't carry anything else, they can do two, three stages. One. Mm -hmm. Everybody else does about one, uh, three stages. And because we're carrying about 20 kgs of weight, and uh, of course, we are new people, not uh, seasoned to it. And uh, he is a fast runner. Comes. It was a place called Zamling. 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 Where we got message that Tanjing has a son. And he asked me, Bhaiya, kya naam rakhna hai? Ka, Bhaiya, Zamling, kya pe hai hum? Oh, that's how the game named <laughs> Zamling, Zamling King came in. Ooh, wow, that's quite a story. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually named Tanzing Norge's son, literally. No, I suggested. Okay, you suggested. Okay, that is a good suggestion, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, then of course we went to base camp. We, well, actually, we had no drinks. So we took Arak Thara, you know, the local drink. Local drink, yeah. I said, we yeah. have to celebrate. <laughs> and he was a very fine man, Tanzing Norge. So and we are going to talk about your relationship yeah. with Tanzing Norge, yeah, okay. but we yeah. want to first talk about Siachen. Siachen. Let's okay. start with Siachen. So after the demonstration, the Director General of Tourism, they wanted to start a ski school. Mm -hmm. He picked me up and said, well, you are a skier also. Can you start a ski school for us? So I started the ski school of India in Gurmark. Wow. I That's an iconic place, yeah. Uh, I trained the first batch, 19 people of ski teachers and mountain guides. And there, I stood by them. I said, they must get, as we get officers and IAS and IPS, they must forget first grade. There's a lot of who and cry in the government. I said, look, I am not taking it over. I have seen this voice. They could have joined Army. They could have joined IAS or IPS. So why shouldn't they? So they got first grade. Oh, wow. So, and uh, uh, so we had training. Unfortunately, we lost two boys in training. One because of he fell down, and another because of lightning. He was the tallest man going. We had seven people. He got it. And then, luck. That was in Gurmuk. Anyway, so I started the ski school. Again, skiing was in winter only. It was called National Ski School first. And I suggested to the government that we should change it to skiing and mountaineering is true. I said, what will my boys do in, in the summer? summer? And uh, of course, I introduced also water skiing. And it was in a water ski demonstration. Uh, Sheikh Shab came, Sheikh Abdullah. And there are uh, information ministers from 40 countries, non online. And they're talking to, you know, how to exchange information and all that. So I was told to hold a demonstration, I did. 
It's a very well demonstration for 45 minutes. But the Anaheite squirrel race also. About 100 squirrels line on one side of the lake. Shikara race. Shikara race. Wow. And they had to come to center where we were sitting. And they had a finish line there. So, when all the squirrels came and one tap was selected, there was a lot of fight, you know. No, I am the first. I am the first. And Sheikh Sahib had to tell them, gentlemen, they are the people I have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so Sheikh Sahib had seen uh, me and motorsports. Then two Germans came to him that we want to do Indus Boat Expedition. What's it called though? Indus Boat. Indus, Indus Expedition. They Indus want to drop down Indus. And they wanted some help and clearance and all that. So, Sheikh Sahib thought of me. He sent his uh, uh, Mustafa Kamal, was my doctor also. Mm -hmm. Mustafa Kamal, his son, doctor, was in Tanmak, but used to cover my school also. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have a doctor. And I must say he also. Sometimes if somebody was sick, he came at 12 at night during the snowing and all that. Anyway, I came back and we met Sheikh Sab. So these two Germans explained there is one of the five largest rivers at this altitude. No rafting has been done. It will be the Germans. Uh, there is a very big, like you have in that there's Stern magazine there, it's very popular. They had been sponsored by the magazine. magazine. So, I said, look, it's such a big thing, why should it be only Germans doing this? I said, it should be Indo-German expedition. And uh, they agreed, because of my age and my relationship here, they made me the leader. <laughs> Not because I was good after. So, uh, and this is 1960s? 75. 1975. Okay. okay. And we got tremendous publicity. If I had a cold, it was second headlines. Ooh. When we reached the center, it was banner lines. Ask me why. Why? Because there were emergency, the press couldn't publish anything. <laughs> <laughs> so because of the the emergency declared yeah. by the then government, there yeah. was no news. Mm. So whatever you were doing on oh, the absolutely. was all over the news. All over the news. Wow. That was quite a quite a time it, I must it, No, it says uh, I got so much of publicity for not a big adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most of my big adventures haven't got anything. It's all the okay. So 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 just to kind of recap. Uh, the Germans came for permission for this Indus expedition yes. and you you suggested let's make it a uh, Indo-German expedition yeah. and then they made you the leader yeah. and now you went with them all the way north yeah. to, to right. where? Then they wanted to start from Chumathang which was an in inner line. Chumathang? Chumathang. And uh, it is at about 15,000 feet. It is above lay. On Indus. Mm. Now, what happened is firstly, go to inner line, it is the army which clears, but SP, they give the permit. Who's SP? Superintendent of Police. Okay, Superintendent of Police. So you're going to use all these names which yes. us civilians may not yeah. know that well. <laughs> so Superintendent of Police gives it. But I got it without army giving anything and I got permission to go there from SP. We went and came there. Uh, one more chap, Kashmiri, Mr. Meer wanted to come here, one of my instructors. I'm sorry, there is no place. Boat was very small. The three people could get, just get in there, with nine feet by three feet. And that could be an adventure because boat was very small. Otherwise, it wasn't a big adventure. So, he was uh, 
you know what happens when somebody is rejected, they go to the press like you. <laughs> <laughs> and the story came out that Indo-German expedition spying down Ladakh because we were on the inner line. Mm -hmm. When the story came, the Brigadier General, BGS, Brigadier General Staff, is a Brigadier and the Corps Commander in charge of the operations. It was uh, then Brigadier Handu, later on became Army Commander General Handu. So he rang me up and called me. I went there. And, you know, as Brigadier, I was only a Colonel. So he gave me hell out of his mouth. I kept quiet. Senior officer. And said, How did you go across the inner line without permission of the army? So I explained to him, he said, I'm not under you now. I'm deputed to the National Ski School, which is under the government of India Tourism Department. Mm -hmm. So, firstly, I don't have to ask anything. If SP gives me permission, yeah, you will go for it. I'll go for it. You know, it went to IB and they confiscated all our films. And there was uh, two people on our guard every time. And uh, now those people who were writing for the magazine, who were paying for everything, they said they'll be dead without the films. And they want to develop film there to see if there's any, <laughs> we take any guns or thing and all that. They says, no, I, we can't do that. And so I, they came back to me. I went to Sheikh Sahib. <laughs> Sheikh Sahib rang, rang up Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi rang up Chief of Staff, a Defense Minister, and they let them go. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally had to keep going back to write to the Prime Minister to just yeah, keep going ahead absolutely. in this expedition. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have to go to Prime Minister. I mean, Sheikh Sahib. Yeah. Because Sheikh Sahib put me in it. So I still a lot of publicity. In 77, they came back and I said, look, we have not the Nubra River. The Nubra River starts from Shartan. You know, hmm. that is Snout. Yeah, the Snout, yeah. Uh, this, as you know, this is the longest glacier in the world. And uh, so this chap said, Look, though this area is in Pakistan, they brought with them the American map, which had showed, you know, in 48 after the ceasefire line, like thing was stopped, and the two brigades went and Locate is where the ceasefire line should be. When they came to the glacier area, they said, Who the hell is going to go up? Mm -hmm. And there has been no fight. So this place called ND 9842. They said from there, the treaty says, and northwards towards the glacier. Mm -hmm. But somehow, the American maps, maybe at the instance of uh, Pakistanis or otherwise, do that thing. They drew from engine 9842 to Karakulam Pass. Straight line. Uh, giving them 10,000 square kilometers. And uh, I spotted it. There's, I was in military intelligence directed before. Mm -hmm. And captain's uh, uh, job is only to get chitraps, draw lines, and brief the seniors that this has happened in the whole day. Mm -hmm. So... I found this line wrong and I went to DGMO. So the Germans showed you the map with this yes. and they said as per this map, Siachen actually is in Pakistan. But they don't come down. Yeah. So I bought the map from Germany for five dollars and took it to General Chamber DGMO. Mm -hmm. I knew him that I third under him at G3 when he was G1. He was left in colonel. I was a junior captain at that time. So obviously, he gave me the appointment. 
And, you know, I was known as a bull. He says, stop bullshitting me. <laughs> <laughs> and he pressed the buzzer, got his japti, then began his metta. He said, take these youngsters, give him a cup of tea, he's my old officer, and see what he has to say. So we met and we came back. We studied all maps. We went back to all treaties, right up to East India Company and Sikhs Treaty. Mm -hmm. So you saw all historical maps? Yeah, they, of... they, they showed me. Mm -hmm. I knew the map was wrong. And uh, nobody else noticed this for like 30 years. So when we began the matter and I decided after two and a half hours, he said to GMO, sir, can I come in? He said, yes, yes, I come. He said, this boy is right. This borderline is wrong. We are given this 10,000 square kilometers of area to Pakistan. So General Shibar looked at me. What can you help you? I said, sir, I'll take an expedition. So I was ordered to take an expedition to search. So after you showed the map, they compared all the maps and they figured out that, oh my God, this is it's true. a problem. Hmm. And then they said, take an expedition to Siachen. Hmm. And you were given that task of hmm. taking that expedition. And who were part of that expedition? I was then the commandant of the high altitude warfare school. Oh, you were you were heading the high altitude At that warfare time. school. Wow. So you had the entire warfare school with you to yeah. take with you. So right? I took the advanced course there. Back I let me give them. The training on the job. <laughs> on the job training. Yes. So you, you literally took the advanced course students yes, and told them, let's go, we are going for a training expedition. Yeah. You didn't tell them they are actually going to no. Siachen and no. they are actually... So, and how many people were these? 40. 40 people. And 10 instructors, all the instructors. And I can tell you something. This, how are the instructors so far? Or perhaps the Toughest people in India, much more than commandos and all that. Wow, high altitude mountaineers. Of course, they have to be, right? I mean, mountaineers, uh, kids, mountaineers, kids, very tough. And of course, advanced course would do anything because I have to take grading. Mm -hmm. So everything depends on the grading the gate. So and of course, a, you were the principal of that college, and when you'd say that I want you to take, I'm sure everybody yeah, just. Were. They were ready. So I had that advantage. Though I was given the choice to select anybody from the Indian Army, they'll give me. I say I want nobody. I'll take this. So <clears throat> a secret letter was written from DGMO to Northern Command. It was passed on to Core, to Dave, to Commander High, all to Warfare School. And uh, one day I was going from a residence to officer's mess in high to office school. A major's wife on top of one flat was telling other major's wife, Apne miyo ko mat bhejna. Colonel Kumar chana baudu ko class kar raha hai? Pakistan bhi kar So actually they were discussing that, yes. oh God, you have, you have gone nuts and you're going to yes, take them and absolutely. cross China and that, cross Pakistan. It was. I was going to both. Okay, you are. Okay. I have been. I went to both. <laughs> okay. You crossed the China border. You, Of course, Siachen was our territory, but to go there, you had to cross China and Pakistan. No. No. So, when the end of Siachen Glacier, there is Shaksham Valley, okay. which in 63 treaty, Pakistan CD2, is our valley, which is China. Mm -hmm. in, after the war, the 62 war. Six, 63, oh. after we lost 62 war. Yeah. 63, they had a treaty. In which this whole area, they said it's to, to China. And in fact, I read that treaty between China and Pakistan. It says that it's only agreement now. It is not treaty till we know who's certain belongs to. 
Oh, so they also, so between China and Pakistan also, they clearly knew that CHN was not yeah. theirs. And it's not when the, it, it was not marked. Yeah. So that's where our security went. As you know, OSI is all over Pakistan, yeah, in Kashmir. In the result, every point I went, I had a helicopter, Pakistan helicopter. After we crossed and the 9 every street. But they didn't do anything to you, they just let you pass. But see, what happened was, it's uh, it's Edmund Chase and the 9842 northwards. So what I had done was, it drawn a line straight to the north. And I kept on that line to this side of east of that line. Line, okay. I never crossed that line. So you created your own line in your map and said, as far as in, I am on this line, I am in the I am in, in the Indian side. territory. So that's why they did not do anything to me. But our security was totally lost, and uh, uh, I came back. Every day they were there. Throwing green flag to say it is Pakistani area. <laughs> the Pakistan helicopters. <laughs> so, anyway, I went back and then I saw there that on the east of that line, they have been sending many mountaineering expeditions. Pakistan. Pakistan. So, I got hold of the Japanese remains, the German expeditions, and also a couple of uh, Mad boxes with Jakka on it, which is, you know, done in uh, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And some of the Pakistan, made in Pakistan, plastic buckets and all that. So I brought all this. As, as evidence. As evidence. Evidence that they've been sending expedition to our area. Yes. Now my aim was, if they can send expedition to our area, why can't we send our expedition to our own area? To our own area. The Vishal Gondal Show will be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Amit Verma, the host of the weekly podcast, The Scene and the Unseen. In my show, I examine the scene effects and the unintended consequences of public policy and private action. I show how policies meant to help the poor often end up hurting the poor. I've done episodes so far on demonetization, GST, surgical strikes, immigration and MRP. And I will continue my forensic assault on the truth in the weeks to come. Catch the show every Monday on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer. Or visit seenunseen.in for all the latest updates. So how much time did it take to for you to trek to Siachen and, you know, what was the... It was a total three months. Three months trekking. Half of Siachen. Half of Siachen, okay. It wasn't half of Siachen. And that meant 15 days march. And of course, there rose. Okay. And we had to start to march from Kalsa. And of course, this was the time when there were no mobile phones, no satellite Nothing. phones. So how, how did you communicate back to the headquarters? We had big sets, this big sets. T20, set. you know, and we are uh, uh, what's called signal man with us. Signal man, okay. So we are sending more yeah, code and yeah. all kinds of. And then we have uh, uh, number eight reset, which is for about five kilometers. You know, we used to carry all that so that they could send it to center, and center will that will just send it to this thing, all division mm. and then core and so on. Wow. Anyway. We came and I... So, so thought, weren't you afraid that, you know, Pakistanis could attack you or, you know, I mean, going with an expedition of 40 people in the cold? Well, actually, I, I was quite sure that they won't because if I don't cross that line, it will be attack on, you know, India. So, one of the tasks given to me was marked the international border. They even asked you to mark the international yeah, border. Yeah, from okay. NJ 9842. And I marked it. And that's the line they are still occupying. 
Wow. It is called, nowadays it is called uh, uh, actual positions by India. And uh, later on when the piece is there, it should be called Kumar line. Oh. Of course, of course they are named. I am not named. I mean named the Kumar base. Of course, there is the famous Kumar base on Siachen yeah. Glacier named. I don't know about famous now. That was called Kumar base. Well, there are no other p bases named there. So, that is why. Uh, but I didn't do it. The army did it. <laughs> so, in my secret report, I also told them. Now, of course, it is declassified, I presume, all those reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That unless we hold Saltoro Ridge, which is 10 degrees west of Indian Night Line, and I told the government if they can bring 30 degrees this side, why can't go 10 degrees that side? And it's a natural barrier. The whole ridge is there. Mm -hmm. And I at that time thought that. Pakistanis and Indians will say at God. What a great man. He made a natural feature into a border. It's as a border. Because otherwise ceasefire line which comes, it even divides its villages. There are ten houses here, the rest of the houses are here. Mm -hmm. It crosses the rivers. It doesn't go along the river, it crosses the river and all that. And wherever the positions were. So I thought both the government will say, yeah, yeah, very wise man. Uh, anyway, I came back and so I said... After, after three months, almost three months. After three and a half months. Three and a half months. After my report, I was telling the high school school. I told them that Unless you occupy Saltoro, nobody can do it. But for two years, Janta government was in power. Nobody would take decision. So the political will was not there on, to do anything. Okay. In fact, uh, this also we had to get it okay from Bajpai. He was the foreign minister at that time. And he said, unless you don't cross it, it's okay. No, I gave him a promise that he won't cross it either, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, then, you see, I had already given my adverse career certificate. Because when I came down from Everest in 1965, we have created a world card, on and top. And this card was held for 17 years, till the commercial mountaineering starts nowadays. And of course, we are in headlines in all the papers and all that. We are given land by Punjab, we are given everywhere. We are given <coughs> AC train, which will take all of us to wherever we want. So this is the first Indian expedition to Everest? No, third. Third. I will come to Everest yeah. later on. Hmm. So, some of my friends went to the chief of his staff. In 65, we also had war. Whenever we have a war, uh, we don't have exam for staff college, which is stepping soon for army officers to go up. It's in Wellington. Mm -hmm. I was the first man to be nominated. So I went to my queue in Victoria Mess. First thing it was bar. I went there. There were 20 people there. I said, gentlemen, have a bottle of beer. So I was very happy. Cheers, cheers, cheers. This is what kya bhai? Us vakat, beer ki bottle ki kimut hoti si dhair bhe. Or staff college ki aamko minne ki mil se 75. Wow, so that was like almost blowing half your salary. One bottle every day for me. Yeah. 
from now onwards. So I said, what is it? <laughs> Let's share a few bottles, half a month bottle, doesn't matter. <laughs> but the evening, three actually Sri did done the Dan Chakri defense. He called me and offered me to take over as principal of SMI Dadri. I thought instead of looking up from a career, I better pass on what I have learned to youngsters. So you actually left an active military career to decide to train yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So that was really, really... And this is again 1965. 65. Wow. Anyway, after we'll do that. I had got so much out of mountaineering. I had to give back something to them. Yeah. So, so just finishing the the Siachen bit before we jump here. So, once you reported that Siachen, the ground situation that Pakistan is sending its own, uh, you know, expeditions and so on. After that, when did the Indian military go and I, occupy I it? So, as I said, I had already given my adverse carrier certificate. So I decided to. Uh, resign and take uh, pre retirement what it was, leave and all that. I had a very good reason that I was superseded. The government of India agreed, and I had the defense ministry letter with me. I could start six months' leave, it's called leave pending retirement. Mm -hmm. And that four and four months, or two months and half and four. One week was left. When the government changed, Mina Gandhi came back, and DGMO went to her, just because the end of the short relation is called Indira Call. Oh, okay. <laughs> Indira Call. Indira Call. It's a name given by 100 years back by Americans. Mm -hmm. But they, they from Indira meant Lakshmi. Okay. Not. Yeah. So she was told that this is the report. Unless we occupy this. She said, uh, okay. So some days I left. I said, look, I started this. I must finish it. And there was no time to surrender, get my uh, resignation back and all that. I said, I'll do that in my leave pending retirement. Wow. So in your leave, pending you were called leave pending retirement. Indira Gandhi came and said, let's go and occupy yes. Siachen. And that's when you were called back. No. I you volunteered. You volunteered to go there because you were not you were Seven not days were left. I have not this thing. Yeah. I said, to help with my leave, I'm going to finish it up. Before I could leave, the doctor came to me. Sir, you are not supposed to be posted above 7,000 feet. Oh, yeah. You have yeah, got frostbite. So oh. you have to go on your own risk. So I signed that also. I was my own leave. I was my own risk. Wow. So literally, the Indian military said, we are not taking any responsibility. But the bull went yes. charging on its yes. own. Yes, you are right. <laughs> And if something would happen to me, my family would got nothing. Anyway, so when I said I will lead this expedition, uh, when the order came to us, I went to General Opium was the chief of the army staff. Because uh, he is also related to us. His cousin of my wife. Mm -hmm. So we were relationship with her. Anko Panmen mil gaya. So, maange. Mein kisi order hai ke ab ja sakte hain. I am sacrificing my leave. Going on my own risk. But one thing I want, I don't want anything to be written. Anything to be? Written. Written. Secret order. Okay. I said the secret order goes from here to command to Chozo. Of many places, the civilians are also sitting there and with clerks who are doing it. And I told him what had happened to me. 
in 78 so pakistan choppers were everywhere yes. so he said sorry i can't do anything in northern command without asking the northern command army commander make a call him here so he calls him here and we all are having cup of tea in chief of army staff office and he told general malhotra he was giving his deep and retirement he is going on his own risk and he has made this request that no secret order should go no secret order should go of army commander has said yes sir <laughs> <laughs> so yes sir so he had come in his nose plane so while he took me back to udhampur so that i could drive from there to gurmuk i was relaxing mera kaam ho gaya but general opium rotra was going up and down up and down pasina aa raha this is the northern command general yeah, yeah. then he came to me he said can i have to take thamari in confidence i can't be your staff officer <laughs> <laughs> i said no sir i said you just tell them what i ask what is in your power they should give to me they should not know where i'm going what i'm doing why i'm asking all this. and uh, if you can't give me then you ask i mean uh, chief or mr staff and they lost the ministry and all that he said yes good idea so when down he said look for this expedition all my powers are with colonel kumar so you were literally the northern command head during yes, that expedition yes. wow that's unprecedented right <laughs> no no it couldn't have been done otherwise yeah i mean so you'd be surprised pakistan only came to know when i wrote article in 82 <laughs> wow 82 my team didn't know 81 we went again na mm-hmm. so my team did not know nobody knew my you'd be surprised a chief of army chief of course staff for my colonel was regiment he didn't know because there were no secret orders going Order anywhere so that nobody I could i told nobody and my uh, cousin was commanding del sudan dev commander he didn't know so how many people did you take with you same advance course 40 people 40 people 10 to so, so. so i used to keep a letter here in case something happens to me mm-hmm. what are the orders wow wow amazing i didn't know nobody knew amazing so you took the secret mission in 1981 mm-hmm. you took took 40 people and then you created the base camp there or how did you go and it's like that that i put the base there you created the base in siachen and uh, this time last time we had not taken any weapons in your first reiki that was just a reiki and i also wanted to show to the people that it's not the army is bull as a mountaineer is coming mm-hmm. and uh, and that helped mm-hmm. because they must have taken all the pictures and all that they were seeing no weapon nothing they were like this is just a mountaineering expedition with uh, the germans yeah so that helped us a lot actually in fact they flying over us helped us a lot and uh, so when i came back it man we climbed the highest peak in the saltor ridge the northern most peak we went to indra call now in fact i have tried only two summits in my life only two summits I mean myself mm-hmm. in 1960 when i was not the leader we get a gyanshing was the leader expedition i was in the first summit party and i missed by 700 feet or something this was which uh, this was 1960 which which summit was this 
Everest. Everest. So you missed Everest by 700 meters. 700 feet. Feet. Oh God, that's that's like... And very, uh, very it cool. was there. We could have climbed it, but we couldn't have come back to tell you story here. And I didn't want... See, mountain is always there. What is more important is but you have to we are not, the call and move back. <laughs> we are not immortal. <laughs> so, in fact, uh, it's the most difficult thing to do is to turn back. And especially when you are 700 feet away from yeah. the mountain, right? Just one hour before. Anyway, I led about 16 expedition. Out of 13 highest mountains in India, Above 24,000 feet. Nine have been climbed under my leadership. Wow. Nine out of 13. But I feel that when you are a leader, you are getting publicity anyway. Yeah. It's about making other people climb yeah. the mountains. I not know, always go to the last camp. Yes. Spoke about that. Exactly. No, that's, that's the biggest mantra of leadership, right? As of a course. leader, you are here to take others on top yeah. of the mountain. And you are your your main team effort. Thing, yeah. And it's, you are leading logistics all the time, right? Logistics no, was your strength. maybe logistics. Also, I'm leading uh, clearing areas and all that. That doesn't matter. But nobody will carry a load if they know that leader is going to go to summit. Yes, leader is always at the base. That base. Okay. I mean, I went to the last camp. Lord Hunt went to the last camp and every Tanzik and Hillary climb. So I learned it from Lord Hunt. I said. Laura Hunt. Lord Hunt. Lord Hunt. Leader of 53 expedition when they climb Everest. Tanzik Nagari and led him. So he led the, the first expedition, which was the first successful. Like, so, <coughs> this time also, after Indra call, I went to help this party and Shia uh, Kangri with the Nadamu speak. It's right junction of. Uh, India, Pakistan, occupied Kashmir, and China occupied Kashmir. So again, when the summer party went up, I went up to the last camp as a sport party. So I gave him the flag, tricolor. There's a picture with the shards of that. So... When they came down and with thorough debriefing, I had a doubt with their clients. So next day, I went up. This flag was lying 700 feet below the summit. I took the sport team up and put the flag in the summit. So only two summits I have attempted. One was Everest, where I missed, and this at the age of 46, which I summit myself. So this is the only summit I have summited, apart from small, small, you know, Metahorn and all that small... Uh, well, but you did the most amazing summit, which is Kanchanjanga, right? Which is why the, the Kanchanjanga from the... I'll come to that later. Yeah. Uh, but this one... It was a very important place, Tri Junction. Because after that, it shocked Zone Valley. Mm -hmm. I went into Shock Zone Valley for 200 yards and came back. It's very unfortunate that uh, Pakistan gave that to China. to China. Otherwise, there would have been no this road which they talked of now. Big trans, uh, what project they call it? The uh, Somewhere. Yeah. Right up to uh, sea. So <clears throat> that wouldn't have been there because that passed through this. Yeah. It is this, this giant project of roads from China all the way yes. to the port. The, port. The port. Yes. Yeah. This main project where India is objecting because that occupied Kashmir is ours, which Pakistan has ceded to China. It's called the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Corridor, yes. It, yeah. Yeah. And China wants India to 
join that. India is objecting. So basically, all these things which we are reading in newspapers and online and Twitter today, you were somewhere the architect of actually creating. No, I don't take all this credit. No, no, I'm not saying the credit, but you know, for 30 years, yes. nobody know. knew or you know, nobody really cared. I don't know what was the scenario, but it took a mountaineer like you to go back and then insist because see, the thing is, you know, knowing this is different. You could have said, okay, you know. I'm sure people know and you could have just ignored it, right? I mean, it's not that many I times. Know, but any other officer in my place would do the same thing. No, but those maps were there with other people also. I'm sure people well, had... Uh, maybe they was not in MI directed and read the maps. I was also in MO directed, military operations, the maps. No, no, but what, what, what I mean is that the fact that there are expeditions going there... It's not secret expeditions, right? If Japanese were yeah. there, it was not a secret expedition. In fact, uh, you'll be surprised. All this expedition which Pakistan was sending into our area was published in all the mountain journals. Okay. Still nobody... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? Uh, so yeah. it, it, is, it is just luck. that people... Just luck. I mean, it, you could say luck or you could also say that, you know, people, you know, sometimes are not really that curious... I mean, in your case, was it the curiosity? Was it what really got you there, right? And that's what I want to know. No. I think I'm lucky to find that mistake. Which for 30 years, nobody had found. No, but I'm sure the Pakistanis knew that they were actually sending expeditions to an area which is not occupied by them. But nobody objected. Yeah, so they were... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the first person who actually objected to it, but not just objected. You went, convinced the military, and then yes. then led a secret expedition back to that place and created the base. So, so my entire question to you is that you know, especially in today's context, right? I mean, today we are talking of twenty seventeen. Uh, the world is very very different, and we see so many problems. So today, you know, if you ask anyone, they can list you five hundred problems which they know about. But why are people not able to do what you have done? I don't know. I uh, you ask them, <laughs> but it's happened. It just happened. No, so is it is it because of your upbringing? Is it because of your mountaineering? Is it because of uh, your army training? Actually, what what led to this? Government of India, Film Division of India, in eighty three, selected three personalities and made the film on them. Mm -hmm. One was Nargis Das. Actress. The famous Nargis Das. Yeah. Famous Nargis. Sanjay Das's mother. Yes, ha, Sanjay Das's mother. I'd rather put it Sunil Das's wife. Hmm. Sunil Das's <laughs> ex Sunil, Sunil Das's sir is yeah. not here. Yeah, dear friend of mine. <clears throat> and uh, no. other was Vinoba Bhavi Acharya. Oh, Vinoba Bhavi, wow, the great social Number two reformer. Gandhi. Yeah, great social reformer. Yeah. Third was your truly. Yes, of course. So, I, I know about that film. But how does one see the film? I tried to look for that film on YouTube. I couldn't yeah, find it. It is on YouTube. Or you come to my house, I'll show you. I'll give you a CD. Okay, I'll get, I'll get the link from you and I'll also post it for people to see because yeah. I could not find that link on YouTube yeah. for some reason. And that film is called Guts and Dedication. Guts and Dedication. So, so well, that's what answers your... It's Guts and Dedication. So, I mean, the the question is that what is different between today's India and the India you led? I mean, 1970s, 1980s was a very different time. India was a very different country, as you know, post-liberalization. You have seen it all, right? I mean, you've seen independence, you've seen everything. So, where do you see India today versus where it was 30, 40 years back? I think India is doing very well. India is progressing. We are the IT uh, we are masters, we have gone to Mars, you know, India is doing very well. And I'm sure very soon, uh, Pakistan will realize also, and China will also realize. That's less such a zone where we are. So, so you did not have a background, family background of mountaineering? I no. So, how did mountaineering interested you so much? You were not a Pahadi. You were not, you know, bound, born in the mountains. You were born in Rawalpindi. Actually. So, so by the way, my grandfather uh, was no. also from Achha? Rawalpindi. <laughs> so, we share the same. Yes, uh, yes, yes. 
source at least yeah. so he used to call pindi pindi of course <laughs> and he used to talk about lalpur which is i think yes aage tha <laughs> yeah so he was i think born in lalpur lalpur acha so lalpur is of course in pakistan now yeah. so is all pindi so how does a pindi boy go See, and i was posted to kumar regiment actually I wanted paras, but at that time paras were very small. Really, pull was called it. the para, the parachuting. That's what para drop. My uncle was commanding second para. I went to him. He said, "I can get you in my battalion." I said, "No," because then I will be always known Bhanda. Yeah. I wanted to do something on oh, my yeah. own. So, so you basically literally have a family of soldiers, right? All yes, your, yes, your lot yes. of people. Well, in sixty-two war, I had fifty-four cousins in the fifty-four cousins in the army. Army, and uh, I was in my directorate. Stilterup used to come to me, and any phone came, "How's my son?" I said, "Very well," but I knew if anything happened, I'll come to know first. First, wow. And I used to with great confidence. He's doing very well. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> okay, so you were controlling the entire. Not controlling. I, I mean, was... news. The you had all the news controls. News. Okay. So, so I think one. So, so you have this amazing military career. You were almost giving that up, but then in your retirement, pre-retirement, literally taking on your own risk, you went to Siachen, and then. after that you have done many mountaineering expeditions you talked about almost 14 or 15 how many yeah. you have done so what did you really really learn what is difference between you know why do mountaineers want to go and climb all the 24 you know all the all these peaks what is the what is in it in mountaineers yeah. and especially since you know both melory you know, tenzing and hillary really melory well. who died in 1924 he gave a very good answer Because they are there. Okay. So I was posted to. Uh, uh, then, when I didn't want paras in second para, I wanted any other para, but second para. So I had to settle for any other infantry. The only other thing I knew about infantry was when I was in JSW in Clementon. The assistant there was to hold K Lulta. Used to hold the cane ulta. ulta. Why is that? Nob is in front. He hold it. That's the tradition of Kamar rifles. Oh. Because once the show went, and by mistake he put there, everybody changed. <laughs> so because I didn't notice anything, this is that is tradition. So I said, this is the battalion, which has tradition. I opt for that battalion. Wow. Because of the tradition to do things the opposite way. Yes, we still just wear black. Our uh, first uh, wife of the uh, CEO Lang had designed a flag, which we still fly along with tricolor, an army flag. We fly that flag. That's amazing. We so, also have a tradition which we have stopped now. That uh, you know, you bring to the president, you bring to the king. We stand on the chair, put foot on the table, and here's the president, and throw the glass back. The tradition has to be stopped because breaking Taji was too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were breaking too much of cutlery, sir. <laughs> <huh? laughs> and uh, and by the way, I want you to cover that. In October, this battalion is celebrating sanitary. One hundred years. years, wow, wow, that's amazing. So I'm going to put Thoda Gar. Okay, for the for the whole function. Yeah. So you've been awarded so many medals and so many. You know, you've got the Padma Shri and uh, you've got uh, you know the various army medals and so on. But in your opinion, what was the biggest reward? Uh, who you consider which you have received or you've got? Well, because the war was that army trusted me. 
we had full confidence. Like Kanchutanga, as you said. Now, this route which we followed had been followed by many expeditions. Eight deaths. The man who got nearest to it, leader of the expedition, which got very near, 3,000 feet down. 3,000 feet down, they were given Olympic gold medal in 32. So, Kanchanjanga is even Leader more, of the failed. The field expedition got an Olympic medal. Leader. The leader. So, I thought there is some talent. <laughs> so, when that was written, uh, it was an army expedition. Not a civilian. Not Indian mountain expedition. And it so happened that I have coming down in ski through expedition. Joshimat. And General Rana was there to inspect 9 Brigade. The Brigade Commander sent me an invitation because I'm the same regiment. I said, sorry, sir, I can't come. He said, why, why, why? I don't have clothes. Never mind. Mecca said, I know my chief. Just because I've done two deputations, one HM my Darling and one in ski school, he didn't call me Colonel. He still called me Shri Kumar. After that, he'll start calling me Hippie Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> because I had the beard, black and white. So he sent three officers of different build with a barber there. They're carrying their own suits. And I tell you, one of the officers' clothes fitted me better than my own. Wow. <laughs> and they had this. I was a black and white. This was white where the thing was, otherwise black. So I was sitting there and having my drink and everybody else making no clue but I'd already know that I'd put in my papers uh, advanced carrier certificate. He comes and sits next to me and said, Shri Kumar, how's it? Every time I see mountaineering expeditions, leader is army, summiters are army, but name goes to Khera and Sarin, Indian Mountain Foundation. I said, may I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, who climbed Everest first? He said, British. I said, no. British only paid for it. <laughs> it was New Zealander and Indian local. He got the message. Mm. He asked me to select something. And I don't want to, I want to challenge myself. I never attempted the peak which has been attempted before unless it's the highest. Like Everest has been done but one had to go. Nanda Devi had been done from this side which one but that was the British. It was first at that time it was the highest mountain in India, Nanda Devi. Sikkim was not part of India yet. Kanchanga was not in India. The highest mountain I had to climb. So I led the expression to that. So it's a uh, when I posted running hit, we got the news that Major Nandujal was taking an expression there. So we had a very long telescope. For many days I used to see how uh, can spot him. Nanda's way slopes are visible from running hit. We could spot him. So then yes, I kept to know that he had already withdrawn from the mountain <laughs> because of bad weather. Mm -hmm. Then I knew that. Anyway, that's uh, so. Central Malaya is a beautiful mountain, right in front of. And I always had desire to go and see on the other side of the mountain. Wow! So that's how you decided to do this. Wow. The Vishal Gondal Show will be right back after this break. Did you know India's most popular music festival was in a way conceived in Estonia? We speak to someone who knows a thing or two about making the NS7 Weekender happen. Did you know that some termites in Africa have a pleasant minty flavor? And just as well because we might all be eating them in a few years anyway. Did you know that the world's greatest collection of human knowledge got its initial funding from a pawn site? That's how Wikipedia started and we tell you how it works. Hey, I'm Chuck. I'm Naren. And I'm Sriket. And together we're Simplified. Simplified. Your fortnightly look at burning issues that you should know about. 
told to you in a way you'll understand with humor, bad jokes and PG Wodehouse references so that you can look smarter with minimal effort. Be smart, funny, erudite and wise and ultra crepidarian. Wait, what's that? To find out, tune into our show. Episodes out every fortnight on all podcast apps near you and on the IVM podcast app as well. Oh yeah. So so tell me something so you, know, you have this whole family tradition of being in the military and you know 54 cousins or 60 cousins were in the army so how come your kids didn't go in the army i know akshay and your daughter i mean while akshay is of course you know and your daughter both are big in skiing and mountaineering but why did you not send them to the army or why did they I not i don't have to send them why did they not go to the army okay that's up to them please the parents can only guide people like i sent my daughter abroad for studying so when akshay grew up i want to send him abroad also he said yeah what are you going there man the chopo chalane i mean he did not want to go there he wanted to be an yeah. adventure rafting hmm. so if i this is like my am crazy boat mountaineer and crazy boat rafting was the first one to do Brahmaputra and all that. There are many first descents which he done. Mm-hmm. And my daughter went become an Olympian skier. Yes, so she represented India in the Calgary Olympics, right? Yeah. Uh, and Akshay also did he represent India in any Olympics? He Olymp- would have represented. Uh, we have to send only two boys and one girl. Girl was uh, of course shall just select it. Nobody is better than him. in india so i sent akshay abroad he was number 4 i sent him for 3 months training abroad so that when his team is going when he comes back we'll have a loss competition and may he may be able to come to he was skiing in france till one day i got call from him which was at ski time while he should have been skiing i told his mother is broken his leg oh as as if i why would be same thing has happened he has broken his knee that put him all out of competition for mm-hmm. three So due to an injury, he then could not participate. But, no, he just came, you know. I mean, but I'm saying he could not participate in the Olympics. Olympics? No, not the Olympics. Uh, he could not participate in the final selection. In the selection which could have led to no. the Olympics. No. Correct. So, of course, you know. So, uh, you may you were talking that both Tenzing Norgay and Hillary were good friends of yours. So, what would they be? You know, looking at today's mountaineering scene. what would you think would be their thoughts around that and what are your thoughts on what's happening in mountaineering today as you know everest is now become like almost tourist spot there are That so was, many people going to be surprise i asked a friend of mine who organizes this expeditions to everest he says sir you don't need an ice axe you don't need an ice axe no, no. Mm-hmm. because ropes are late you only need to march up your Wow! Steps are made, ropes are laid, everything is there. If you have just pay money and come. So, so, so when, so when you did mountain, that was the real deal. It was actually actually we had again there used to be only one expedition at a time. Mm-hmm. Now there are we talk of traffic jam on Everest. Traffic jam on Everest summit. There is a traffic jam. Yes. So uh, things change, but I'm glad. There are not many commercial exhibition in Kanchenjunga, and uh, Kanchenjunga, the Sikkim government has been again stopped. I was lucky to get permission, because that is the time when Sikkim had become our state. Yeah, and I just we made Mrs. Gandhi as the patron of that mountain. That mountain man, we expect him as going. Mm-hmm. So we didn't have to ask anybody's permission. 
we took our permission and we went there. And somebody asked me there. I used to go there because Maharaja of Sikkim used to be my board of HMI Dajari. He said, the one of that is Kansab, why didn't you ask us? I said, Dwan sir, three years back I have come here. When in principle of H. M. Dazali. Sorry, ten years back. And I was guest of Maharaja. You should have seen in my bar, bar of the guest house, thousands of whiskies and all that. All that you covered. He was very, very good. Host, very good. And uh, so I saw him in a good mood once. So I said, let's go and try that. So we had an appointment. And he very kindly agreed to him. And then Gyalmo was there, Queen Nasik. I said, sir, we should send this Indo Sikh means expedition. The Gyalmo was right, speaks very well, but she was lovely. How dare you climb the mountain with my husband worships? That is the end of the visit. I cut my visit for three days. Came back. I said, sir, I'd ask you. Then Maradha would have been the patron of this thing. Lucky. Mm -hmm. So now they don't allow expeditions to continue. No. There's, there's no... Even I think uh, there are so many mountains. Of course, we know the Kailash Parvat also. You can't... Like Nanda Devi, it will close again. Yeah, Nanda Devi is closed. For uh, ecological reason. In fact, I've written a book, Highest of High Himalayas, which is highest in Bhutan, Chomalhari, which was we only climbed and now they closed it. So you have climbed... Chomalhari. But me, my team climb. Okay, your team. Of course, you were the leader. I went to the last camp one. And Nanda Devi in close. Kanchitunga is close. And Sultoro Kangri yeah. is close. Wow. So you've climbed. So all the mountains you've been to after you climbed, they've closed. No, except, okay. except uh, Everest. Ever, of course, Everest is there. And of course, it'll be in fact, there. Uh, it takes all the mountains in the world. <laughs> the so, to go to Everest. So, uh, you know, during this entire journey of mountaineering, several, you know, for so many years, have you come across situations where you were literally, you know, we see it in movies that you're climbing on a rope and somebody's pulling you and... Many times. Many so... Times. This is many times. Firstly... Mm, and I, and I remember there was, 57, there was one scenario where there was somebody who you were on a rope for two days is what you were talking about, right? I will come to that. Yeah. By 57, China has occupied Shai Chin. And many other areas they are fighting. Even now they are fighting. The intrusion in Ladakh, the intrusion in uh, Trijunction. So, in Parliament, somebody asked a question. What are you doing? They are doing so much. Then what he said? Not a blade of grass grows in the exciting. Mm -hmm. So somebody took house, his cap, he was bald. He said, doesn't mean that you cut my neck out. <laughs> <laughs> Just because there is no hair you... <laughs> so he had to do something. So in 1961, after my Everest, he called me and he wanted me to go and occupy Barahoti. Which was in India, we have been collecting touches from them for uh, last 150 years. And Sikkim Maharaja and then East India Company and then so on. But because these other sides are the Malayas, we have to cross 90,000 feet high peaks and then get there. Chinese can just put the road straight walking, mm -hmm. plateau. So just because I've been highest and Everest. I was selected by him. The army in the Eastern Command was asked, yes, sorry, it's impossible before June and July. There used to be one BM call. You won't know. Very famous was set. 62 wars. And uh, he was CGS. He was, you know, all pressures were under him. His BM thought this is 
this youngster would be able to do it. Pandits were very keen to do it. Because that's the only area which we have evidence that we've been collecting taxes there. Now, they have... We've been collecting taxes. We've been collecting. Because why? It was a trade route. The Tiptons were lazy. They couldn't cross Himalaya. The Gilwalis were quick. They used to cross and that 150 square kilometers of pasture land mm -hmm. used to be big bazaar. Now, Pandaji wanted to occupy that. Army said no. So, Pandaji one day called me. Nakar said, if you give me support, I'll do it. Nothing is impossible. So, when you say Pandaji, you're talking of Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay. <laughs> so, I said, so you give me a logistical support. I'll go there. Nothing is possible. I still remember Eric Vaz, who was a operation branch from Eastern Command. He told General Call, we are sending this boy on a suicidal mission. And then I must give credit to Pandit. He called and says, look, you may have been pressurized to go. I can lose. I volunteer to go. That area is still with us. Wow. That is the only area, only from, we got from China, which we haven't given back. And this is now close to the... Joshmat? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So that's why, as a captain, I got AVSM. Wow, as a captain. The minimum, with six years service. Because the minimum people get is brigadier, <laughs> major, even some lieutenant will get. Wow. No, I think it's, it's outstanding. No, I'm just, you know, feeling so excited listening to all your stories. I'm also interested to know, I mean, you literally have started company. You were literally the first mountaineering or the company MHE. And before that, you also did something with Tenzing, Norgay, and I think now you're doing something with Jamling. Could you tell a little bit more about uh, what you're doing now with all your various ideas? Uh, and... see, I'm an infantryman. Our people in junior EMI, they're educated, they get good jobs, you know, here and there. The only job we can do is security company, bank is how So I didn't want to do that. So I started this adventure travel company. So it's MHE. M it so happened that there was a very big adventure travel who started adventure travel in the world, Leo LeBan of Mount Travel USA. And when he used to come, O'Brien used to give him room 250. Wow, wow. It's like three rooms together, separate bar, everything, two men studying all that you would call, you know, right after Jojo. And then he asked me, he says, I can trust you in the mountains. But when my client come, they also want to see Agra. They want to go south. You don't have staff with you. Why don't you tie up with Mercury? So GK Khanna O'Brien called me and I said, just tie up. But two years they didn't come through. They wanted to give me his own pay, car, foreign trips, Everything, golf link house. I said, sir, I want equity. And I want 51 equity. Because you are a big company, you can screw me anyway. So, no, no. So, the other partner was Obroy. Obroy Hotels. Obroy Hotels. So, it kept on. And they agreed to 14% uh, and 24%. So, one day, GK Khanna was playing golf in Gurmuk. Ask Manor of House. Opie Motra was also there in golf. I'd call them for a dinner at my place. It was smoky and all that, you know. Oh, Bukhari used to backfire. The smoke. So after a couple of packs, G.K. Khannar, vice president, senior vice president, I forgot, his son in law also, Brian son in law, G.K. Khannar. He said, Colonel Sab, Shadi Ode. 50 50. Opening Mutha turned around 
and says, and WFP gets me. So, can with him, he says, I am taking responsibility of this, my officer. And he took me away. He said, Yare, tu panga le rho, bro. He said, <laughs> eh, there was that's our idea so we won me <laughs> so 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 i got equity you negotiated 50% equity with the obroy group and started your travel yeah. company and do they still own the equity or is it now they have. okay there's a problem <laughs> <laughs> they do nothing but have it anyway uh, i couldn't have done with those at all hmm. so i didn't want to open a pawn shop mm mm-hmm. now right in the beginning market travel they used to get in 10% they could send anybody abroad of those days as to get business class mm-hmm. i used to be received by the representative in london put in five star hotel and that agent used to get all other agents ready i just had to give a talk and have my drink mm-hmm. and come back i had so much of facility i couldn't have done my own amazing so, can it so so you got you started getting people to do trekking and mountaineering in india this started which year was this hmm? which year was this actually it was uh, company was started uh, in 81 1981 when i put in my resignation okay after that so now almost what when i put in my resignation then chief of army staff did you care out after he heard this story of sachin dj mo said look i will explain him don't take more than 20 minutes there are some days left of my retirement when i rang up his ms if he wants a briefing please tell him otherwise after seven days i'm a civil man he came and stayed for two and a half hours and he confessed that i was in lay as a brigade commander mm-hmm. i didn't know where the sergeant was so it was absolutely top secret and had you not insisted on that secrecy things could have been somewhere no. different no uh, he said why you are resigning no uh, vice chief has been and vice chief said sir is going to vice president of obrais all this cause blah 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 god flaming her you say i know all these four brothers in army they didn't put on uniform for money they put it on for honor me i said that honor is little cut when you are supposed to this he says you will raise your resignation i'll make you bigger and every time your coachman gets the thing you get that and uske muh mein raha yahan nahi aa paya but i'm glad i started it army adventure cell mm-hmm. i gave back to the army now the brigadier as a wing commander it has four ups under him and whole army is in adventure and you of course also recruit a lot of ex army people to work with you also right i did yes at mh you also uh, took the first civilian uh, uh, expedition to siachen last year uh, I think Dilshad then. Uh, no, no, it's not the first. That's not the first. First was long time back mm-hmm. when the same mountain travel chap. He said, "I'm going to Indra call you now." I charge them hell of a lot. I said, "I want you to put him off." You quoted him a figure where he'll say you'll not come back. Could not come back. at that time i thought you never say except you say he said yes wow i put my 40% then sell sell it <laughs> no but that was just a couple of people how big was that no you be surprised the 15 people 15 people and they tried shia kangri they were out to do and uh, half of them fell sick came back and who was a fit could go to indra call this chap lol born went to indra call So, sir, you are now what eighty two, eighty one, eighty four years old, young, and you still are completely fit and fine. So, I wanted to know, what do you do to keep fit? What is your routine like? That's why I want this. Yes, we'll get you the goki for sure. I think you are going to love it since you now. I tell you why. Hmm. 
every day, one hour, I go to gym. Because when you are walking around, you get sweaty, wet, to, let's go after five rounds, do round go in. You go there, you have see youngster, all type, doing that. And it is air condition gym. Yes. In Delhi, of course, the weather is not great yeah, right now. So, kutho jai, one hour gym every day. And early morning, I do a lot of uh, yoga from back. I have a backache, unfortunately. I'm mm-hmm. putting on a belt now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's tr- troubling me a lot, actually. But still, in morning, I do my half an hour yoga for the back. Mm-hmm. And then evening go for one hour. And what's your typical breakfast like? Ah, I had fruit in the morning. And, and, and what was it like when you were mountaineering? When you were, say, 40 years old. Today you are 84. When you were 45, what was your breakfast? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, uh, uh, like Ame, mountaineers march on stomach. <laughs> of course, stomach is important when you are but, mountaineering. <laughs> And is there a particular kind of food you always used to have a lot more when you were mountaineering or even today to be healthy? No, nowadays, like, do you have I have eggs? more protein, okay. less carbohydrates. Okay. So you At have... that time, I have more carbohydrates, less protein. <laughs> so you have a lot of more proteins and less carbohydrates yeah. for sure. And of course, I, I presume your your thanks to the army, you still continue to probably have your drinks. That's one thing which is Are difficult they, for army uh, men to give up. Uh, look... If I give up, uh, why I'm exercising? Because of two drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but unless I exercise, I can't have drinks. Well, all I can say is that the drinks are the secret to your success too, right? I mean, that is, you know, especially when you're mount- in mountains, you need the... No, but tell you something. When I go to mountain, when I'm the leader, no one is allowed to drink, either on approach march or the mountain or smoke. Ooh. Wow, that's really strict. And of course, that's it's now everybody tells you you're not supposed to do it. Yeah. So, uh, it so happened and we went to Kanchuchanga. Almost one truck full of rum I sent back. One truck full of rum was sent back. Sent back. So, Diff Commander, you know, rum is a liquid gold. Yeah. Especially in the military. So. In the military. You go to a forest shop, cut a tree, this is, <laughs> and uh, this is loud as a, you know, bribe. <laughs> it's all right, it's okay. Ram and uh, got something done for this thing. So, it so happened that I had some Sikmi porters with me. Obviously, uh, it was snowing and all that. I got them all the army equipment and all that. Uh, on third day when the snow fell, they left the load there and ran away with the equipment. It was lakhs of equipment. And people didn't know how to write it off. But one thing helped me. The Duke Mother there said that this boy has more integrity than I have. Mm-hmm. He sent all this rum back. Nobody has ever done it. Absolutely, it's unheard yeah. of, especially. And therefore, uh, he can't be held responsible. So, so what is the gear you then love? Then the chief yeah. sent the, some of the CDHF to me. So we discussed. He said, there is a... So the chief doesn't have 50,000, only chief could write after that. Mm-hmm. Now, why chief has passed to buy anything he wants? And chief didn't want to go to the government after all the success, we have lost this equipment. Mm-hmm. So, this CDA chap told me, the auditors and all that. So the, the, other, the other question before we, before I forget that thought, the, what is the gear you own? Like what is the mountaineer gear you typically use for all your expeditions? Well, starting from below, we'll have about uh, cotton socks, small woolen socks, thick woolen socks. Then we have a 
climbing books which is two layers or that wood cover and the spikes for the and then when there is ice we have crampons hmm. um, in fact i calculated apart from my body weight an average if anybody goes is 22 kg wow 22 kg worth of gear including no, gear oxygen oxygen food yes your water bottle your everything thermos 22 kg wow that's a lot yeah no, no. yeah not for mountaineers but for average people well, yeah. it is going to be a lot trekking at yeah. such high altitude ah, of course so so what are your uh, life hacks so life hacks are things you can do which makes your life easier is there anything you learned in the mountaineering or in the army things which you use even today actually one thing i learned was nothing is impossible and also if you fail you should be discouraged in fact failure is a impetus to your success did you also had a lot of failures many failures yeah. first failure was i couldn't have even joined the army the first course which was selected jsw they had only interview they had no upsc exam so i went for a second year i was selected wow i saw out my book <laughs> at a great time pictures <laughs> blah 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 and uh, at the last moment they post examination to upsc i felt i couldn't go therefore i had to wait for one year prepare for it pass the thing and go mm-hmm. so that was first failure then an average was a failure then when i went to mountaineering course my commanding officer was wasting your time you must be doing rifle training course you must be motors course dnm course this 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 my sir i'm Trending my leave, what have you? All my courses, mountaineering and skiing, I trended my leave and did that. Wow! So everybody discouraged you to take up mountaineering. Everybody, no, not just them to take up mountaineering. They wanted me to study staff college, this, that, you know, okay. the tree going up. That's amazing. That's amazing what you've been able to do with this. No, but actually, it's a choices you make in life. So, is there any piece of technology or any equipment you use today, every day, which is less than ten thousand rupees worth? No, no, no. Everything. I mean, lots of things. So, what do you? Your use? socks are less than. No. So, what do you use? What is a piece of technology which you bought, which you use almost every day, Af- apart Not, from your cell phone? Uh, I. Only thing is that. You are climbing heights. You have to drink a lot of water. Mm-hmm. You get dehydrated. When you go higher, air is cold. It takes away a lot of moisture on the body. out of your lungs. So you have to. Drink. And second time I learned was, uh, take it easy. It so happened that in 1960, every expedition, Kohli op- opened the ice wall first. Second was mine. I took the bridges and all that for two days. We put the pita and the rope fix, and the ice wall we went up. After I thought Kum looked like a plain ground. From camp two, I went to camp three. Put a tent there. Then I came to, just saying that I established not only came to, I established came three also. Then I went to come for, for something there. That route is open up till come for. But I had climbed too high. Coming back, I was vomiting, after blood, and you just pile. I also started vomiting bile. Bile. It would take me. Uh, one hour to come down ice fall. That day took me fourteen hours. They put me on a stretcher, took me down three stages, 
tell your doctor with me, lot of oxygen, lot of good food, and uh, I was there for 15 days. One portal was coming. Actually, I was kicked out. Team is a casualty; can never go up. So I asked, "Kya ho raha?" Kehta Gyan Singh Sab, aaj camp one mein gaye. Wo camp advance base mein jaake summit team announce kare. Sixty ki baat karu main. So na next day cross three stages in one day. Wow. Now Gyan had gone first is the first. Camp when I had come here, so then to catch up with them, he went to camp two. Next day again, I did three stages. When he was about to reach camp three, I came with the juice and tea. Sir, you must be thirsty. They were surprised. Boy, <laughs> oh God! I was in team for uh, summit again. And they went hard in two days. Abdan Des is a very tough chap, but still the other people said he can't stand altitude. He is only proof sick. They sent me in Kohli to South Call to do that. When we just short of South Call camp, uh, I informed Bigiri Gan Singh that uh, the Sherpas who had gone to South Call had not come back. He said, "Oh God, where will they spend night? They don't." I said, "I'm going for the search." So I took some food and all that. Took my sherpa and went there, and I found them in a crevasse. I loaded them all this food and all that, and said, "Don't come now. Winds are very strong. You come tomorrow." I came and reported to Gyal Singh. He says, "You need not go up now. Come down." So I was like, "This was for some party." Wow! So, look, I've been rejected there. I didn't give up. Again, select. Again, failed. Didn't go up. But I tell you, I think that's the best thing ever happened to me. Really, if I had climbed, they would have given me Padma Shri and Azunabad, built another and shoot, run it in Manali. I would have been stuck. No Kanchanjunga, no Nanda Devi, no Shyamsing Lecher. I got a most highly awarded Kadhi uh, Randi General uh, Officer in the All Armed Forces. Then I would have been just Padma Shri in this. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have got uh, VSM because nobody would send to Barahot. Mm-hmm. You know, once you climb up the army thing, you are a prize. So anybody who gets VC Victoria Cross and all that, we keep him back. Okay, is exactly, exactly. So. One last question before we we come to an end of our amazing conversation, that if you had to give advice to yourself when you were just twenty, before you started the whole mountaineering thing, what would have that advice been? If today you had the opportunity to give yourself an advice, well, I'll tell them that never give up. So that you already did. That advice was already there. Yeah. You never gave and up. Then so what is the other advice? I said. Everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. Our human, if you can go to Mars, what? And after all, it says it's hard work is there, knowledge is there, but it that's not a lot. Best thing is imagination. You got must have imagination of doing different things, doing thing out of box. Yeah, and that's what I've been doing. So. absolutely a great pleasure uh, colonel kumar it has been my honor and i think the stories and uh, what you just talked about it's it's almost you know like unbelievable i think it's so amazing to sit next to you knowing the fact that if you were not there possibly the history of india would be very different and proudly the siachen glacier which we are all so proud about wouldn't be in india's control so thanks a lot again and a uh, pleasure to have you on the show i know i think uh, any other officers in the army can do the same thing and thank you very much for calling me thank you thank you sir thank you
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction, and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry. Food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. It'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.